Hey, uh, Brother Damon, Damon Chief Jones here. I, uh, want you all to know I've done a lot of, uh, self-assessment on myself. And I have assessed, and again assessed and recessed, the auditors that I associate with, the places I've been to audit, and I've come to a very powerful conclusion. I believe we're doing that which is right, and these public servants are not doing that which is right at all different levels of the government, from the local uh, small town police department of 500 or 1,000 people on up to major metropolitan cities with one, two, three million people in their jurisdiction. Uh, whether it's a post office, the police department, a courthouse, a judge, so forth and so on. And uh, the team psychologist has pointed out to me and I feel compelled to share it with you all that the bow movement for a clash with bow he is now a political prisoner check me again he is a political prisoner And he has become that by uh, not his actions, but because of the actions of others. But they're holding him guilty for the action of others. He has made First Amendment constitutionally protected comments, thoughts, and review on a judge. And some people took it upon their self, based on what he said, to conduct their own comments, their own thoughts, locally, statewide, nationally, on this judge. And basically, he is now a political prisoner in the Texas judicial system, in the criminal justice system. And uh, that is very, very concerning. Now, if y'all will remember back Nelson Mandela in South Africa, he was a political prisoner. And they basically offered to cut him loose at different times under different administrators to release him but he had to do this, that, the next thing so that they could control the narrative and control him and control the population. And he said, no, 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 no. And eventually the movement got so big, they had no choice but to release him. And guess what? He become the president of South Africa. Okay. I'm not saying that Bow's going to become the governor of Texas, but I'm not saying he won't, neither. Uh, the point I'm making is the world has had a lot of political prisoners. People didn't violate no law, no rule, no regulation. They acted totally within the law, but somebody in a political position a judicial uh, judicial place of authority, a prosecutor, whatever, has a political agenda, and they're going to make an example out of you. So that's why they're treating Bao like he is a terrorist, treating him like he is a capital uh, felony offender, uh, or, or that sort of thing. So that's wrong. And all that's doing is, that's going to make everybody hate 
that judge that much more. That's going to make that many more people write letters to the Supreme Court Justice in Texas and to their legislators about this judge over there in Crowley. And uh, that's going to fire people up on, on the Facebook and other things. So because he publicly criticized her and critiqued her, then uh, other people felt that they could do also. And they could. They didn't violate no law either. But uh, she decided, I'm going to retaliate against him. That's a crime in Texas, to retaliate. Uh, and that's exactly what the chief of police did. He also retaliated against all the press and the auditors and the innocent bystanders. Okay, he, he just... And uh, here's the deal. He has a bully mentality. And he, whether he realizes it or not, he has metaphorically committed suicide. There are so many things that he's done wrong. There are so many ethical, moral, illegal acts that he committed under Texas state law and federal law. Uh, it, it ain't going to surprise me in the least little bit if the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, doesn't do a SWAT raid takedown on him and the police department for criminal actions over the top. Now, I'm not saying they will, but I ain't saying they won't. And some things won't surprise me. Now, I've had a lot of people reach out to help me, including uh, current and former law enforcement. You say, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had judges in certain places reach out to me, and I've had other government officials reach out to me. And so let's just say that the questions they asked me and the dialogue they wanted to get into, I did. And they're very happy with my knowledge. They're very happy with my participation. And uh, I consider myself very, very well guarded. And in fact, if I am there on the 21st, you know, I'm not an athlete and I'm not in the absolute tip top health, but uh, you know, I intend to be there on the 21st. But let's just say if I am there on the 21st, it would be a very, very serious mistake for the chief of police to arrest me or cause my arrest. And I've been told that he is specifically plotting to arrest me with whatever he can conjure up. Uh, because as far as he's concerned, no matter what, I, I can't beat the ride to jail. Well, I hope he has a lot of money in the bank. And I hope he has a lot of assets because once you step outside of your scope of authority, once you step outside of your uh, peace officer status, then you're personally liable for the lawsuit. You are personally criminally responsible. So he would have to uh, be writing letters to family and friends from behind bars. Plus, anything he, he has, anything he owns or has a right to, including any pension, I have a good chance of being able to attach that. And uh, that's bad. That's bad for him. But uh, he's gunning for me real hard. And he's gunning for News Now Houston David. He's gunning really bad for us, too. And for obvious reasons. David's the granddaddy of auditors and credentialed press. And I am uh, 40 years in law enforcement and I have law enforcement criminal justice credentials that are outstanding. 
so they're after me because he and certain other people feel like I've betrayed the criminal justice field. And that's not true. I have never in my life, and I am not now, quote, anti-cop. That's a new government word, anti-cop. Uh, it compartmentalizes you and puts a, a uh, uh, basically a target on your back. Metaphorically and probably in reality also for a lot of different things. So the, the long story short is we're the big targets and we have absolute good reason on good sources within and without the department that we are almost certainly guaranteed to have charges drummed up on us that are bogus fake. But me and David will have to fight over the chief's assets, whatever they may be because I got the juice and he's got the juice to squeeze him like a lemon, squeeze him dry in a, in a lawful court of record in Texas and or federal court. So everything he's worked for his whole life could be going down the tubes playing games with us. And he's already at risk of that now with other things going on and the other lawyers that are preparing and getting ready to drop their lawsuits and I would say the lawsuits will be dropping in seven days or less. Uh, in fact, I know exactly, exactly when the lawsuits will drop for who and why and all that, but I'm not going to say it out loud. I'll just let that be a surprise gift to the boys in blue. That ain't true. Now, to the boys in blue that are true, that obey the Constitution of their state in the United States, you got my total 100% support. Absolutely. I would take a bullet to protect you. Make no doubt about that. If you're acting lawfully and somebody tried to stop you, or you had somebody committing a, a uh, armed robbery or a rape in progress, I would do anything I could to help you. But if you go across the Constitution to hurt people, to put your political agenda on them, to, to uh, conspire to deprive me or other people of, of our God-given unenamable rights that are constitutionally recognized, the Constitution doesn't grant no rights. It only recognizes that which is in nature, which you are born with, okay? You're born with too many rights to count. And they, that's why they said among these rights, among them, that that's telling you there's many, many more. Countless rights. Government, however, only has privileges, okay? So government that only has privileges can only issue privileges. We, the people, individually and collectively, have rights. We can exercise rights. All government has is privileges. No matter if they call it a right, it's a statutory right, which is under the government. So it's proclaiming itself to have some right. It has no rights. It's only privileges. It has specific scope of authority and specific duties. It must, it must carry out. When it steps outside of that, and when it reaches outside of it, then it's null and void. And there's too much Supreme Court cases in our nation, and even in the state of Texas, that says, no, 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 no. Now, based on the description of a constitutional peace officer in Texas, then this chief is not a constitutional peace officer. He is a municipal government employee and he is a law enforcement officer and he is a statutory peace officer. Now, what does that mean? Well, they give them the authority of law to act as a statutory peace officer, but he has to comply with the standards 
of TECO, Texas Commission on Law Enforcement at Austin, Texas, he must comply with that. And, it, and, and if you look under a peace officer, the way he's acting and the things he's doing sets him in a different definition than peace officer. So I go down and try and look at law enforcement officer and see what their requirements are under TECO and what they are under Texas law. And he doesn't meet the definition for law enforcement officer based on his behavior, actions, conducts, attitudes, and a wholesale arrest of an entire lot of people. Meaning a group, a large group of people that he just throws a dragnet blanket over and says, you're all being taken in. There's no rhyme or reason, no logic, just that he... And if you pay attention, the charge he's doing is saying that they're retaliating against him. The very thing he's doing against them. So the officers that are below him aren't going to be able to say, well, I just followed orders. Because you have objection of consciousness. That's like Muhammad Ali. He was a conscientious objector to the war. Okay? He didn't believe in fighting or killing. And so he was a conscientious objector. And that's been the standard in the world forever. A man cannot be made to violate his conscience. Okay? Uh, just like you can't be made to, to have any certain specific religious beliefs. You know, if you're, if you're in the religion of non-belief, then that's your religious right. To believe or not to believe. To practice or not to practice. But the point is, he stepped outside of his authority. He's acting uh, as a mafioso muscle, as a mafioso boss. And it's like these officers are his lieutenants. They're the uh, muscle that carries out the boss's orders. Okay, So him, and there were several officers out there, but he, just him and one other officer depriving the whole lot of people, meaning several of them, violating their constitutional rights is a crime under federal law. So he had multiple officers in him, and they knew what they were doing was wrong, and it is something they plotted and planned, and it's so obvious on its face value. So if the chief has a nickel's worth of common sense, but it's hard to say when you're, a, when you're a bully and you've bullied your way through life to come up there and you're, you have delusions of grandeur and like I'm the king and you're peasants and I'm going to pee on you, which is peons, you know, he's going to pee on the people, then uh, he'll, have to be, he'll have to be held accountable, and he is. But the wheels of justice usually move real slow but they move. And in the end, the wheels of justice run over evildoers and wrongdoers. Some of them, it takes a little longer. Some of them's a little faster, but they get there. So make no mistake. And don't think uh, almost part Texas, I call almost gone Texas. Uh, don't think anybody forgot about them. Don't never think we forgot about them. Don't think that they're, that, that they're not going to be revisited. Don't think that there might not be more rallies over there. Don't think that the lawsuits aren't going forward over there as well. Okay? So, the chief of police thinks he's real dang smart. Now, a lot of people, when you arrest just a whole group of people like at one time, people go, oh my God, let's be scared, let's run. But the chief has never really had to deal with any serious activist. An activist becomes so because they saw wrong done to others or themselves. And so they get this searchlight, a floodlight, high beam light, and try and shine it on wrongdoing. If they themselves become a victim of it, either again, or it was a family or friend or other people's done wrong and that's done to them. Either way, they're looking at like, I was done wrong before, now I'm being done wrong again. All that's going to do is make me go grab my family 
my friends and call all the other activists in the area together. So instead of maybe there being 15 of us, now there'll be 100 of us. And if they go to jail again, then they'll come back and maybe there'll be 500 of them. And if they go to jail again, the next time there'll be three or 4,000 of them. See, so every time he talks nasty to people, every time he acts arrogant and cocky, he's, he's writing a check. He's writing a check to the activist. He's writing a check to the credentialed press and the citizen press. He's writing a check to them. He don't know it yet. But I say he's done, done committed suicide metaphorically by his action and behavior. He's going to have to pay for it, and he will pay for it. There's no doubt he'll pay for it. In fact, the day that he was at the door and called me silly, you know, using my police training observations, I could see his eyes flashing a little bit. I could see especially his left hand was really shaky and jerky which means that his nerves was on end, okay? So when I seen that, I said, wow, he's scared. He's real scared. And he's liable to act out. And what worried me is that he's the chief of these people, and he's going to tell his gang. Now, I, now most police departments ain't a, ain't a dang gang, and they don't act this way. And uh, you usually find this in small departments, say 50 officers or less, and the less the more so uh, in small communities that usually have 2,000 to maybe 20,000 people. And they're anywhere from two square miles to five square miles in size. So they got a limited geographic area and a median size population then they get used to being boss dog but you know these are these are tactics of, of mafia so he's not acting like a chief of police he's acting like a mafia don and he's got these officers to be his muscle and enforcers but they're enforcing something that ain't law pretextual pre-thought pre-arranged arrest designed to discourage activists all it does is fire them up so they're coming back with more and more people from across texas and um don't be surprised that in those people that that he thinks are all activists and he thinks are all photographers videographers uh, First Amendment auditors, Second Amendment auditors, Fourth and Fifth Amendment auditors. It ain't going to be no surprise if there's some FBI agents, some DEA agents, and some other alphabet agents in the, in the mix. And they're going to have their IDs to say they're Joe Blow from Kokomo. And when they run their fingerprints and run them, it's going to come back because the DOJ runs the records. Get it? The DOJ is where the FBI is. So they run the databases. So they're going to put fraudulent information in there for their undercover officers. So then the chief of police, he or his people arrest one of these people. Then they get to see everything they do. And then they've got a federal judge in the right place that the minute that they go into jail and they get whatever intelligence they need, then they're going to they're gonna pull their cord, make that phone call, and they're going to get a federal writ for release, immediate release. And then they're going to go into federal court and do the things that they need to do. So don't be surprised if that happens. Don't be surprised at all. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that I know about, but I'm not talking about. And so uh, I'm saying don't be surprised at this and don't be surprised at that. I'm not saying exactly what is going on, exactly what's not, but I'm giving you some hints. And some of this stuff is going on not just now, 
but was actually going on before. See, the chief of police and his people may have already arrested somebody that's in the circle that they think is one of these crazy lunatics that aggravate police to test the police to see if they can hold their temper, see if they can obey the law, see if they do right. So they may have already arrested somebody that's like that and they don't even know it. But then maybe not. Who knows? But, uh, it's 50-50, huh? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to do a video and let y'all know about, about being a political prisoner like Nelson Mandela and about the chief over there acting like a mafioso and using the people to help him inflict his will. You know, when the people in Germany went into World War II and they said, well, we only did what Hitler said to do. They got checked on, you have a duty of conscience. You have a lawful right and a duty to refuse unlawful orders. And if you carry them out, you're as guilty as the person that gave the orders. So this ain't just the chief. This is all the officers, his lieutenant, sergeants, detectives, and other officers that worked in this. And it doesn't matter if they actually went out and did the arrest. If they was part of the planning, part of the strategy, uh, the process, yada, 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 then they're also in conspiracy to deprive people of their rights. So guess what? The whole police department can go so long, goodbye, and all their assets, not just the chief, but everybody else's assets can be seized and sold and liquidated to pay the judgments. And then they, then they go to jail. So then they're going to be separated from their families. You know, like this immigration thing where they separate people from their families. Well, forever and a day, it doesn't matter if there's any, any children in a car and the parents are arrested. They're automatically separated from their parents because their parents go to jail if there's some criminal charge. And the children are taken over by the state to when and if the parents are released. It's the same thing with immigration, but, this is but, people put a political spin on it and get people very emotional. But people are always separated from their children. I mean, I, they don't allow children to be in no jail, okay? So all Americans, anywhere in the 50 states that's arrested, they're always separated from their children. And a lot of times, both parents are arrested. So the state takes over the, the children, okay? And, and, and they foster them out or keep them in a state home or whatever. So they're always separated. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because several people have asked me, said, what do they do about people that go to jail? Just like on TV. You know, you, you watch MSNBC like lock up and they go to prisons and jails and stuff. You know, there's some, some single fathers and single mothers that go to jail and their children are separated from them. They can't go to jail and the person can't stay out. So why would somebody from a foreign country that's already committed a criminal act by crossing the sovereign border, international criminal trespass, why would they and their children get a special right that Americans don't even have? When you're arrested because they commit a criminal act just by coming in the country, that's a criminal act under federal law. So they're separated from their children. And so I've had a handful of people say, would you please explain that to people because they seem to be confused and they're, they're misinformed, they're misled, they're worked up into a frenzy, you know? So they said, please tell people that so for the people that's asked me, I've tried to explain it, and it's common sense if you just stop and think about it and you don't get emotionally entwined in it. But anyway, happy 4th of July to everybody. Everything will be peaches and cream, and uh, 
I, I expect to be there on the 21st along with Self Defense Fund, Open Carry Texas, and I am credentialed press. Okay, David had credentials, credentialed press, and he was taken into custody, arrested. Now, you can call it detainment, but the way he was treated and da 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 da, I'm going to say he was arrested. And uh, he was credentialed press. I mean, he's got on this big, gigantic vest that says media. It says press. And then he's got his uh, press uh, badge, press pass, whatever you want to call it, showing that he's credentialed and he's a part of a media association or a press association. And that he's a member in good standing. But I am also. So, anyway, any who, any how... I think they'll be gunning for him and me. You know, we uh, we may wind up uh, being with some other people that ain't exactly out there there by protesting, but we might be in some position to observe them and record them. And we might have some long range ear binoculars. There's another word for it, but I can't think. But anyway, We'll be able to hear anything they say at a whisper at many, many, many yards away. And guess what? We may have a lot of technology. We can see a lot of things they don't think we can see. And we can hear things they don't think we can hear. And then we got somebody on the inside as well. So they're cooking their goose from the inside.